Okay, welcome everyone to the first virtual outreach symposium of the NHGRI Genome Technology Program, Understanding Recent Advances in Genome Technology Development. I'm Stephanie Morris, a program director at NHGRI and a part of the management team for the Genome Tech Program. That also includes Katie Barsley and Mike Smith. So I hope everyone can hear me very well. Uh, so as a reminder, there are two objectives for this symposium, to provide a fundamental understanding of how new genome technologies are utilized and to highlight opportunities and challenges associated with their optimization and use. So today's symposium is organized by NHGRI's Genome Technology Development Coordination Center. You'll hear more about this center from Mark shortly. He'll also give an overview of the symposium and the first session. So that's Mark Adams. So what I thought I would do in the next few minutes is briefly introduce you to the Genome Tech Program and some funding opportunities that may be of interest to you or your colleagues. So the NHGRI Genome Technology Program, or GTP, is a long running program supported by NHGRI. The focus is on accelerating innovation, development, and the early dissemination of novel genomic approaches and technologies, and the refinement of current technologies. So you can learn more about the GTP by going to its webpage on the genome.gov website. There you can find resources such as funding opportunities, information about the program, and scientific areas of interest, resources for applicants, as well as contact information. On the right-hand side here is our team technology at NHGRI. These are the program staff that manage the applications and grants that we support through this program. We all cover different areas within our technology development portfolio. You can also find contacts by research area by going to this link on the bottom of the page. It isn't just those in team technology, but all program directors at NHGRI. So some of the funding opportunities that would be relevant to this audience include requests for applications in response to our transformative nucleic acid sequencing technology, innovation, and early development. This is focused on DNA and direct RNA sequencing. We have an R01, R21, as small business opportunities. And the next due date is in February, 2023. We also have RFAs for technology development for single molecule protein sequencing and single cell proteome analysis. Uh, this is an opportunity in collaboration with two other NIH institutes, NCI and NIAID, a ton of acronyms. The next due date is in June 2023. Lastly, we receive applications through the parent announcements for the R01, R21, and the Small Business Program that are focused on genomics research and technology development. So we have a notice of special interest specifically for genomic technology development, in which applications can be submitted in response to parent announcements. NHGRI is also signed on to a NOSI for synthetic biology for biomedical applications, where our interest is in synthetic biology relevant to genomics. So this is for our ones only. And I think it's important to mention that we also support administrative supplements to current NIH grantees to promote diversity in genomics. So this is to support students, postdocs, and eligible investigators from diverse backgrounds, we have rolling deadlines starting October 1st through May 15th. There are two program announcements for this opportunity. You can find other NHGRI funding opportunities on our website. And so what I wanna do here is just wrap up to broadly, by broadly talking about what we support in genomics at NHGRI. So consistent with NHGRI's vision to improve human health through advances in genomics research, we support cutting edge research in this area, as well as the development of new technologies and methods to study genomics. So the technologies and methods should be comprehensive and unbiased. That is approaches and tools for assessing genomic features, structure, and genomic interactions. This would be approaches, this would be the development of tools, as well as the applications to address specific research problems. And when we say comprehensive, what we are talking about is high throughput approaches and on the scale of genome-wide. We are also interested in generalizable methods and knowledge that is not particular individual diseases or bi biological systems. Whatever is being studied should be relevant to several diseases or systems, not particular individual genes and not mechanistic studies. So if you're interested in learning more, please take a look at our recent strategic vision that highlights our priority areas. So last but not least, 
I'll end here with a very large thanks to members of the outreach working group. So these are genome tech grantees and the NHGRI Tech Dev Coordinating Center for organizing, today, for organizing today's meeting. We are looking forward to hearing from all of the speakers today. I'll turn it over to Mark now. I'll add uh, my welcome to everyone as well and get my all my screens organized here. Um, uh, yeah, welcome to an outreach event for the T Genome TDCC. So we are a group at the Jackson Lab funded by NHGRI to, to assist the grantees in this broad portfolio of programs get the word out about the great work that they are doing. And this is one event that we have uh, scheduled as part of that, uh, a really broad program. I hope you'll enjoy it. We also have a few previous events that we've run on spatial transcriptomics and on nanopore sequencing that are available on our YouTube channel. There'll be a link to that shown during the break in the program. The Genome TDCC spans a number of different areas as Stephanie talked about in terms of how genomics is used in biology today. It spans everything from genome sequencing to new technology development to applications in functional genomics and also nucleic acid synthesis technologies. Since being able to make DNA exactly to one specification in the context of synthetic biology, as well as all kinds of biological screens is really important in understanding biological problems. So we try to span the, the, the range of this and the um, 65 funded programs that are part of this portfolio are in, active in each of these areas. You can learn more about those at our website. The first panel, uh, the first session of this outreach meeting is really going to focus on genomic technologies and sequencing approaches. And perhaps the most widely used slide in genomics is this one from NHGRI's website showing the decline in cost of a human genome sequence over time. Um, you can see a big drop when uh, the Selexa or Illumina sequencing was introduced and then additional drops over time as step changes in the Illumina technology have, have been developed. It's really kind of hard to get your, to wrap your head around this graph because it's on a log scale. And so each of these little lines represent a tenfold reduction in the cost of sequencing a genome. And so that, uh, that original goal that NIH set of the $1,000 genome has now been met. But if you look at this plot, it's been relatively flat over the last couple of years. I think 2022 represents an inflection point for that, and we're gonna hear more about that today. Another plot on the NHGR website is, is this one. It really looks the same, except the y-axis is different. Instead of being a genome-centric view of the cost of sequencing, this is a base pair-centric view, the cost per, per base pair. Um, and you can see that now the cost of uh, collecting a single megabase of sequences is really remarkably low. And again, it's gonna continue to decline. But this low read cost of sequencing has really enabled a lot of biology. I think it also, this graph kind of masks a couple of different issues that um, are really important. And we're gonna talk about that today as well, which is this is really driven by Illumina sequencing, the cost of Illumina sequencing or short reads. And in fact, that has been represented a big contribution it's 90% of the total sequencing market, but it's also um, really, uh, a in a way, a narrow view of the complexity and power of sequencing-based approaches for solving problems in biology. So to, uh, without trying to limit this, and there's, uh, uh, if, if there's any kind of dash seek that you might've heard of, uh, there, that's all driven by the power of these technologies to understand biological problems at the level of the genome, the transcriptome, the epigenome, and even now at the proteome through oligotag antibodies and other approaches that use the power of DNA sequencing to understand what's going on at the protein level. And I think the interest in sequencing technology may have grown out of genomics or genome sequencing, but is now pervasive in, in all areas of biology. And as I mentioned, short read sequencing is what a lot of people use, but the long read technologies have really also transformed the kinds of questions that can be asked um, using both PacBio and Nanopore approaches. We're gonna hear much more about this 
uh, the latter today in particular around the ability of biological pores through a membrane to, be, to, be, to act as sensors for macromolecules. This is a remarkably powerful technology and adaptable as you'll see. So if there's a set of trends that I would like you to pay attention to as the talks go through today, one is that the declining cost of sequencing is really enabling much greater power and sensitivity across a range of biological assays by being able to sequence more deeply for the same cost. You can collect more data. That might be more transcripts per cell for a single cell assay. It might be more extensive contacts for genome structural analysis, et cetera. And in addition, the breadth of technologies and platforms that are being rolled out are really enabling lots of new approaches and new kinds of biological questions, such as long leads, base modifications that we'll hear about from Sarah and so on. The long read sequencing technology in particular has really uh, brought about this year the first truly complete genome sequence in human and raise the possibility of complete, truly complete genome sequences across many different gen gen uh, human genomes, really emphasizing human genomic diversity at a level that hasn't been possible before. And I encourage you to keep an eye out for the Human Pan Genome Reference Consortium, which is a way to capture and more effectively use all of that information that's present across the human population, rather than a single human reference genome has been, as has been used for the last essentially 20 years. Um, I alluded to the fact that 2022 is an interesting year in genomics, and this uh, quote from uh, Genome Web, which is our, our journalistic rag of the field, uh, really highlights this, that, that this year's AGBT meeting uh, saw the introduction of several new sequencing companies. We're really pleased to have Mark Pratt from Ultima Genomics here. Ultima received SBIR funding from NHGRI early in its development. And while that certainly wasn't sufficient to get it across the finish line in terms of the products that they've developed, I hope it was uh, an initial contribution to that. Um, these companies uh, really have many different approaches, uh, technologies, niches, and applications that range from um, really extraordinary reductions in cost that, and throughput that Mark will talk about, uh, lower cost in smaller platforms, higher accuracy of single reads, that have really important applications in a number of fields. So for those of you who are following the sequencing technology space, this is a really interesting year and a lot of fun things going on. And with that, I'm gonna turn over to uh, introducing our, our first speaker. We're gonna have three uh, speakers in this first session, uh, Mark, Sarah, uh, and Mark, and I'm Mark, I will be moderating. So uh, just ask Mark if you have a question. Um, there, uh, we will, uh, the, the first three talks will go through without interruption for Q&A. We're then going to have a panel discussion uh, during which we'll uh, uh, respond to questions that have come in through the chat and uh, engage in further discussion. So please do enter your questions as we go along in the Zoom chat box, and we'll address those during the panel discussion. And with that, I'd like to introduce the first speaker, who is Mark Akison. Uh, professor of Biomolecular Engineering at UC Santa Cruz, and one of the pioneers in the field of nanopore sequencing. 